Yet another study says that dietary fiber is gonna keep you from dying young. Sorry, carnivores. It seems like every week I do another study talking about how fiber is good for you. I never thought I would be the champion of fiber as a high protein guy. I mean, I knew fiber was good for you, but I kind of just thought, ah, did my PhD in protein? I'll end up talking about protein and getting jacked, losing fat. And then we get to 2025 and there's crazy people out here saying crazy shit like fiber is bad for you and it doesn't matter and it's just empty toilet paper filler and blah, blah, blah. Then why does every single study, every single study, every single one on mortality that I've ever seen consistently show a dose dependent effect of fiber on reducing mortality. And now we have it in yet another population. So this study utilized the NHANES data set, which is the largest nutritional data set in the United States, and followed people with type 2 diabetes over 20 years. And in this population, like all the other populations that I've ever seen assessed with dietary fiber, people who consumed more dietary fiber lived longer. And this was an independent effect of many other variables. And it was dose dependent. So they divided these fiber intakes up into turtiles. And the lowest turtile was 11.3 grams of fiber and under. The medium turtile was 11.3 grams of fiber to 17.5 grams of fiber. And then the highest turtile was 17.5 grams of fiber and up. Now for reference, the average American intake is 13 grams of fiber. What they found is the people consuming the highest turtile of dietary fiber had an overall 20% reduced risk of mortality. They also had a 39% reduced risk of cardiovascular disease mortality specifically. So fiber, great for overall mortality, but also appears to have a pretty powerful effect on cardiovascular disease mortality in people with type 2 diabetes. But this applies, I mean, we've seen this, uh, we've done studies in people with renal failure, people who are healthy, people who have obesity. It doesn't matter the population, more dietary fiber intake reduces the risk of mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality. And they also did a regression analysis. And what they found was that there appeared to be a kind of inflection point. You got a very precipitous drop off in mortality as you increased fiber intake up to about 22 grams per day. After that, you still got it decreasing risk of mortality. It's just that it was a lot lower returns for how much fiber you were consuming. So going from five grams fiber intake per day in this model up to about 20 grams of fiber intake per day reduced the risk of mortality by about 25%. So the baseline comparison mark was around 10 grams of fiber per day. If you start at five grams of fiber intake, your risk actually goes up uh, 10%. So going from that five grams of fiber per day up to the threshold 22 grams of fiber per day, you decreased your risk of mortality by about 30%. That's a pretty powerful effect. Now, if you go from that threshold level, that 22 grams per day to 40 grams per day, so almost doubling it, you still get decreased risk, additional decreased risk and additional benefits, but it was only a further 5% decrease in all-cause mortality. So it's still good to consume more fiber, but specifically, if you look at under the threshold, so anywhere from zero grams of fiber a day up to that 22 grams per day, Every five gram increase in fiber resulted in a 7% decrease in the risk of mortality. So again, a dose dependent, pretty powerful effect. If we relate this to previous material we discussed, we discussed the study recently in ultra processed foods where the highest level of ultra processed food intake you know, the fifth quintile increased overall mortality by 6%. And again, we said, you know, you want to avoid ultra processed foods if you can, minimize them. But how powerful is fiber? So people who ate low ultra processed food versus high ultra processed food have an increased risk of 6%. Five grams of fiber decreases your risk by 7% up to that threshold. So again, fiber rocks. And they saw similar effects with cardiovascular disease mortality. It actually was more powerful the break point here where they got the majority of the benefits was around 20 grams of fiber a day. So going from 5 grams of fiber a day to 20 grams of fiber a day was approximately a 50% reduction in risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. And again, it makes sense. For every 5 gram increased increment of fiber, there was a 10% decreased risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. So what are my main takeaways from this? My main takeaways stay the same. You should be eating your fiber. People in, on the carnivore diet will say, well, I don't need fiber, I poop just fine. Yeah, you'll poop without fiber because a lot of your stool is actually simply turned over intestinal cells. So you will accumulate things to shed. There's still 
non-digestible material in food that your body will have to get rid of. Now, research does show that fiber helps with uh, increasing frequency and ease of elimination and constipation. There are multiple meta-analyses on this, but sure, you can poop fine without fiber. That is the smallest reason that I am worried about you taking in dietary fiber. The reason you should take in dietary fiber is because one, it is the main fuel for the gut microbiome. Two, it has been shown to dose dependently decrease the risk of mortality, the risk of cardiovascular disease, and the risk of cancer in a dose dependent fashion in multiple meta-analyses. And carnivore people want to say, well, it's healthy user bias. If it was healthy user bias, then we would not see the consistency of the effect. Now let's use something that carnivores like when I talk about, which is I don't think red meat is an independent cause of cancer because in studies where they control for overall diet quality by looking at people who eat enough fruits and vegetables and eat high red meat intake, they don't see those effects on cancer. That is a situation where I do think healthy user bias may apply. But studies on unprocessed red meat are inconsistent. Yes, there's many of them do show an association with cancer, but quite a few of them don't. But when it comes to dietary fiber, every single study shows a similar effect. There was a recent umbrella review of studies on dietary fiber of over 17 million participants. If you are not willing to admit that fiber has health benefits after all this data, then there is literally nothing I can say to you that is going to change your crazy mind. If you don't want to eat fiber, don't eat fiber, but don't lie to yourself and say it's good for you. Many carnivores will say, well, I cut out fruits and vegetables and I felt better. You probably had some sort of gut irritation from some foods that you were consuming that were high in fiber. And what I would recommend is to go back and one by one, add back in fruits or vegetables one by one and see what you tolerate versus not. Because sure, you can go carnivore and especially if you lose weight on it, you will feel better and you will feel more healthy and your metabolic health may even improve. But it's not going to improve nearly as much as it would if you actually had fiber in it. And I want you, even you crazy carnivore people, I want you to live a long, healthy life. Eat your fiber.